one of the most exposed high-risk places there in that region, maybe even in the entire state, is the city of Cape Coral. With a population of about 200,000, Cape Coral sits on a large peninsula surrounded by water. And Cape Coral is a classic Florida real estate story. Founded in 1957, the area was a swamp, brought up, bought up by developers who marketed it to prospective buyers as their own slice of paradise, a waterfront wonderland you see on the sign there. Back in 2006, PBS aired a documentary detailing the history of how the city came to be. Their salesmen spread out across the country and around the world, praising and sometimes exaggerating the joys of living in this new waterfront wonderland that was springing to life in Southwest Florida. Prospective buyers were flown to Cape Coral where they were wined, dined, and taken on car, plane, or boat tours and subjected to a high-pressure sales pitch. They called it fly and buy. Small aircraft often taking off from an impromptu strip on the Cape Coral Parkway would fly buyers over the vacant land where salesmen dropped bags of flour to mark their new home sites. The thing is, as improbable as it seemed when they were doing that, uh, it, it worked. As Michael Grumwald writes in Political Magazine, Cape Coral, quote, really captured the essence of Florida, precarious civilization engineered out of a watery wilderness, a bewildering dreamscape forged by greed, flimflam, and absurdly grandiose visions that somehow stumbled into heavily populated realities. About 60 years after its founding, this is what Cape Coral looks like on a sunny day. It's beautiful, full of beautiful homes, and nearly all of which are on the water, all waterfront, thanks to the 400 miles of canals that weave through the city. And as you can see from the pictures, it looks like an incredible place to live. But of course, the danger is what happens when you get a near direct hit from a nearly category five hurricane on that peninsula that sits just a few feet above sea level. This is what Cape Coral looked like yesterday afternoon. As Ian swept through, the canals flooded. There was water in the streets and homes. This is what the area looked like today. There is so much water, it is hard to tell where the canals are and where the streets are. So Cape Coral, in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian, showed the danger of what happens when these two trajectories intersect, when they meet. On one side, the development of these kinds of areas in Florida and other places, but Florida specifically, that are attractive precisely because of their proximity to the water and their natural beauty. And on the other, the undeniable fact that climate change is happening. And as we put more carbon into the air, as we heat the atmosphere, it is producing more frequent, more extreme weather events that hit precisely those highly desirable areas like Cape Coral. What we're seeing today in Southwest Florida is the aftermath of that. 